on the battle for Kandahar. Across the dusty plains, mountains rise abruptly, a protective circle around the city of Kandahar. And here we found the first Soviet and Afghan army outposts, like islands in a sea of Mujahideen. Tanks at ground level, lookouts high above the road, and the remains of a large Soviet fuel convoy ambushed some time ago. The Mujahideen now move round and brush up against these defences all the time. And it was across the road, just a hundred metres from this Soviet position, that the Mujahideen slip over to gain access to the city itself. Immediately, the extent of their hold on this area, only four kilometres from the city, became clear. Out of sight of the ever-watchful Soviet troops, they milled around, armed to the teeth, with weapons which still come across the border from neighbouring and friendly Pakistan. But in the three kilometres or so between here and the city, we came across the scene of many a last-ditch stand by the Soviets and Afghan troops. This is the litter of war, left as they were pushed back in bitter close-quarter fighting over the past few years. We walked into the Kandahar suburbs with Ismail Gailani, a senior leader in NIFA, the National Islamic Front for Afghanistan, one of the seven Mujahideen groups fighting the Soviets. He'd come on the long journey to meet military commanders from these other groups to try and persuade them to settle their differences in the fight against a common enemy. He harangued the meeting at length, gunfire all round, emphasizing the need for unity, but it's doubtful if the outcome was really as optimistic as Ismail Gailani suggested. All of them say, yes, you are right. We haven't got anybody before to tell us the same things. Now you told us, now we know when we are fighting together, that's better for us. Do you think you're going to be able to take this place? If we really want to fight against them, we free Afghanistan. Not only Kandahar, all Afghanistan. Between prayers, the weapons are brought out. Here, a 72mm recoilless rifle made in China. Another Chinese weapon, copy of a Soviet 82mm gun. These are the weapons they've used to push both the Soviets and the Afghan army back into the strongly defended positions in the major cities. This then is Kandahar, or at least the old town. Thousands of people used to live here before the Russians came nine years ago to smash it all with aerial and artillery bombardments. Now, only the Mujahideen live here and fight, pinning their enemy down around the huge mosque which stands on the southern edge of the city. The Soviets, who were in the process of withdrawing their troops from Kandahar, have reversed that process. It's a sort of stalemate. The Soviets are disinclined to take the fight to the Mujahideen, who in turn seem content to keep up a steady harassment rather than an all-out attack. It's later on that leaders like Haji Latif hope to take the city from a demoralized government force once the Soviets have withdrawn completely. Some reinforcements moved along the road, but the Mujahideen failed to take advantage of this tempting target. The enemy was also engaged at much closer quarters amongst the ruins of the town. The Soviets have yet to lose an important population centre, but if this city does fall under Mujahideen pressure, it will allow them to form a provisional government here, one which could be recognised by the Western powers, an important step along the road to replacing Kabul's communist regime with an Islamic government. <laughs>